Hello viewers, Super GT here. It's that time of the year once again where we have another season of the GT World Series Manufacturers Cup. And it's always a cool time because you have to dedicate yourself to a manufacturer. And on this occasion, I'm gonna go with Suzuki of all brands because we have this, the VTT. It's a car that you probably haven't seen too much of before, but for very good reason, I've decided to choose it for this deep forest race the first round of the season and at the moment it's quite clear as we go out for qualifying that the Nissan you can see in front there Nissan is clearly the dominant car in group three and four to be honest but let's focus on group three as not many manufacturers can really get close to the Nissan but I was hearing some faint murmurings about the excellence of the Suzuki so I felt like it was time to try to challenge that Nissan and see what we can do about trying to beat it. So here around Deep Forest, track with fairly long straights and then a twisty section in the infill. Into the uh, hairpin here though, at the end of the first straight. Awkward corner, always seems to want to oversteer, although I must say that the Suzuki handled it with flying colours. Absolutely scintillating stuff. Now down the back straight, I'm going to whip it forward a little bit as we head into the 90, uh, the 90 degree right hander at the bottom of the hill and then the infield so let's see how this car handles some corners shall we always important that a car can go around the corner as opposed to just going straight on and crashing into a wall in my experience anyway through the tunnel maximizing the track width on the way in and on the way out carrying the speed through this final sector and to be honest it feels like an okay lap but nothing out of the ordinary because as we come down the hill here the Nissan GTR is going to throw themselves up the inside and there we go uh, we've been overtaken by the dominant car I mean that's nothing to, to cry about but after bigging up this car so much I'm only going to put it P8 and ultimately after a couple more laps I wasn't able to improve on uh, prove upon my time and if you see me all the way in a dismal P14, which is just not good enough. 1.448 seconds away from pole position. A friend in the chat here gave us a nice little message. Hello, viewers. Thank you very much for that. But as we jump into the race, we're going to have to really turn this one around because P14 isn't good enough, quite clearly. But we have 18 laps to try to turn that qualifying misery around into... A racing result that we can rave about and it's going to kick off quite soon here because with the Ferrari we're going to make short work of it go flying up into P13 and into the first bowling alley of the day here we go uh, plenty of cars getting battered around like bowling pins which is always beautiful to see and as a result of all of that I'm going to move up into P11 now one of the crucial things that we must uh, note down here at this point is that I was actually over revving the car in qualifying. I was rev revving out all the way to the end of the rev gauge. Um, but actually this car turns out it's better if you rev it about halfway up the gauge. So um, it just hits the power band a lot more efficiently and you gain a lot more speed that way and you really maximize the potential of this car. It really is very good in a straight line when you do that. And that's something I missed out on qualifying. Unfortunately, this is the first time I've driven the car and therefore I was kind of learning on the spot. So let's see what we can do uh, in our first, very, uh, first ever race in this car. It's been a good first lap, not for that Ferrari in the back of shots. Plan C, crash the car. Uh, comes the order from Maranello and he duly, ob uh, duly obliges by flying into the wall. Now, a car going in, as you can see. Now, look at this speed difference. This is really where it comes into an effect. Look at that. Making short work of the Subaru. I mean, the Subaru isn't the best in the straight line, but I've easily gone past, and I'm continuing to fly away. And that's just in one straight. There's basically no chance that a Subaru can keep up with this Suzuki. It's actually so OP. It's actually kind of ridiculous how much of a difference there is just there. And you might have noticed the car went into the pit lane. Uh, so uh, certain cars on different strategies. I'm going to go for the one stop, hard to soft. But here, three abreast into the tunnel. That is not going to end well. 
Luckily, I backed out in time before we had a catastrophic incident. But catastrophic incident is about... Is, well, that's about to happen because the Porsche head just turns to the right, even though I'm there. We're into the wall as a consequence of that. And then we swing back across and the Porsche is going to end up in the Shadow Realm. And I'm just going to say that, well, I was already on the inside, so um, it was a self-inflicted uh, Shadow Realm entry there, I'd say. But his loss is my gain. We're going to move on in P8. Six positions gained so far. It's been a solid start to the race. A couple of minor incidents, but I think nothing, nothing to lose sleep about. And with 16 laps to go, and one second, or just under a second here, to the Ford Mustang in front, which is no slouch on the straights. Let's see how that gap comes down by the time we get to the other end of the straight, which is the top of the hill here, as we flick it to the left. Now you can see there we've gained about two tenths of a second in one straight alone. It just shows you the prowess of this Suzuki VGT. It really is quite a monster in a straight line and a really solid alternative I would say to the Nissan GTR and you know the GTR is just so so strong in group 3 and group, uh, group 4 and therefore you know it's quite hard to actually have any alternative to it uh, but this this car here you know it's actually really quite a solid option but the Mercedes in front uh, has taken definitely not a very good option there by just driving straight on into a wall and for those who are new to motorsport, uh, a top tip is just don't drive into the wall. I would always suggest that to everyone. Um, in fact, that's my first tip. That's my first tip. That's the first thing you should learn uh, to keep it on the track, really, and not to crash. But here we go, end of lap number three, and we're sitting in a really quite a good position. I mean, it's seventh. There's six better positions than that. But what I mean is we've only done three laps in an 18 lap race where we started 14th so p7 considering all of that is actually quite okay with six seconds off the lead which is actually really not that much given we've had to dice our way through the pack so i'm fairly happy with the progress so far and we're moving forward on the harder tire we're actually on the hard tire we're going to move on to the soft tire the faster tire later uh, but this point look at this it's it's i mean it's a two horse race, but really, there's only one horse that's, that's quite clearly going to win this one. And it's quite inevitable. I mean, when a Suzuki VGT is behind you, you just know what's about to happen. And we're up into, into sixth place of all places. Now, I suddenly caught up with these two guys by lap five. And, you know, this is quite cool that we started 14th and we are looking at P5 and P4. I looked up the inside here, wasn't quite close enough to go for it. But can we get the move done on the Nissan on the exit? Not quite. Um, but we're going to have to settle in behind through the infield. And unfortunately, I was a little bit too precise here, as you can see. Going one pixel over the line. The infamous one pixel penalty. There it is. And that is going to hinder our progress somewhat as we come up to the penalty line just a lap later. And there are two cars behind, and I was worried that I was going to lose both of those positions and drop to eighth. But luckily, I was far enough of, far enough ahead that I was only going to lose one position to the Ford Mustang. Um, so that's um, it's an unfortunate unfortunate penalty. Came at kind of a bad time. Undid a fair amount of progress. I'm going to try to get back past this guy through the infield, but it's quite tricky to overtake there. So we're going to wait to get to the, the longer straights now here it goes quite hot on the way in and that's going to give me a really good exit better traction and i'm going to get back into p5 so you know it just shows you the really negative effect of getting a penalty it's taking me two laps just to wrestle back to the position where i was and even still i'm a couple of seconds further back compared to where i was the two guys in front are a good three seconds up the road now so that definitely has not helped me at all uh, just shows you really the negative effect of even a one second penalty just pays to really push the limits but obviously not go over them now this is lap seven we've done seven laps on this hard tire and we're going to move over to the softs at the end of this lap and run those to the end 
Therefore, this uh, in-lap here needs to be good, ideally. In fact, every lap needs to be good. There's 18 laps in this race. And ideally, you want them all to be good. Why would you want any of them to be bad? I'm not sure why you'd want that. But here we go. I'm going to peel over to the right-hand side. Make sure we don't cross the pit entry line there. Move over to the right-hand side. And uh, whip on the soft tyres. The boys and girls there from Suzuki doing a fantastic job as ever. As we exit the pit lane... We're going to resume this race in, where are we going to resume it in? P11. Now the thing here, you might have noticed I didn't take upon any any more fuel at the pit stop. But I was slightly down. So I don't know if that was a bad decision. But we are going to have to save some fuel. And by extension, the planet. By the end of this race. Uh, so a fair amount of fuel saving to do. Um, but I'm confident that it's possible, especially with this car. You know, it's got seven gears, and you don't have to rev it too high to really get the speed out of it. That's quite a key advantage, I would say. So, coming up behind a Mazda, another car which is very good on fuel. But my main worry right now is that I think they're on the hard tyre. At least they're on worn tyres. Therefore, I don't want to lose too much time through this infield section. As we come into the tunnel, he's going to have a bit of a weird incident here. Slide a little bit wide. I'm going to dart up the inside and take P10. That was really close. I mean, that was probably one pixel away from contact. And thankfully for the both of us, uh, that one pixel was there. And there was no catastrophic incident to report of in the, the news the next day. Right, the master actually goes into the pit lane, as you can see, at the back of the shot. And this is that phase of the race where you're kind of on your own and you're kind of just churning out the laps. But these are just as important, these laps. We have 9.2, 9.1 laps of fuel remaining. And I've actually got 10 laps to do. And for those of you who are experts in math, well, you probably work out that I will stop short with one lap to go. So I'm actually going to have to save one lap's worth of fuel between now and and the end of the race which is no mean feat my main strategy really was to hold it in lean mix 2 through the infield where you really don't have as much of an effect um, and therefore you don't lose as much time so you see a couple of cars going into the pit lane i think three cars went into the pit lane there so i moved back into p7 which is roughly the area i was before my pit stop now here, I decided, okay, look, I'm not saving enough fuel. I'm going to have to go into a leaner mixed, uh, leaner mixture. So I went into lean mix three for a couple of laps. My main strategy really was to make sure I saved the fuel earlier in the race or in this stint. And then in the last couple of laps, I'd be able to really push and go for it and attack if I had to. Albeit with another penalty, which is really, really frustrating and... Uh, I'm sure it's frustrating for you to watch. And that felt really painful serving that one, I must say. But we're going to flash forward here to lap number 13. And I decided, you know what, we're still in P7. But I am gaining on some of the cars in front. We can definitely gain quite a few positions here. But I felt like because we're in the slipstream of this car in front, I'm going to save a bit more fuel. Uh, at least on the straights and through the infield. Um, which is all of the track. Uh, what I meant was on that straight there that, that we just did. And then the infield. Now the, the two cars in front are uh, about to engage in a battle. As you can see, the Subaru goes defensive. But then kind of outbreaks themselves. Goes way too deep. And we're going to perform a fairly simple switcheroo. That's about as easy as an old switcheroo gets, I would say. And that's P6 once again. Sixth position has been reached back in the natural habitat. But P5, right in front of us, and we're on the front foot, we're on the soft tyre. The fuel, we're getting there with the fuel, and therefore we can begin to attack now as we enter the latter phaser, phaser? phases of this race, I can't talk. Anyway, down to the final corner, lap 13, five to go after this one. And this is a really good demonstration of the speed of this car. The Porsche is okay in a straight line, it's kind of an average car. But look at this, I can go into lean mix 3, in fact I'm going to go into lean mix 6, and I know I have the slipstream, but I'm still gaining on this guy quite easily, I mean he could be in lean mix 6, I don't know, but I'm guessing not. And 
that just gives you a good idea of just how kind of strong this car is in a straight line. It really is very, very fast. Uh, so lean mix six, and it's still keeping up with the Porsche. And that that did a world of wonder. That did um, that method. Sitting behind this guy for a few laps. No, not to the end, obviously. I want to still want to overtake him at some point. Um, but as we come through the final corner here, putting it back into lean mix one on the exit. Am I going to do that? I think I am. Four laps of fuel to go, with four laps to actually go. And here we go. We're going to put it from three down into one. We're going to go for the move now. I've had enough of saving. I'm going to go to the left-hand side. Fair enough. I'm going to whip easily around the outside. And it's just no match, really. This Suzuki is just... It is just so effortlessly fast in a straight line. It is just quite hilarious how, how good it is. And we're going to try and pull away now. A couple of cars in the middle distance behind. But we're not really worried about those. Even this Porsche that we've just overtaken. You see, he's got the slipstream. He might be fuel saving, but... I could quite easily pull away. I didn't really even have to think about defending into this corner. Normally you would at the end of quite a long straight. That just shows you how, how good this car is. Now... Sitting here in P5 with the Porsche in tow, but my main priority really is not on the car behind, but on the on the two cars in front. These the two Spaniards having something of a civil war here around the Deep Forest circuit, and we're going to in turn try to turn that to our advantage by catching up slowly but surely. So winding through the downhill section then back up the hill towards the first hairpin lap number 16 so two to go past this lap and as you can see two cars in front not taking the most optimal line so we're definitely gaining here and i'm not sure what tires they're on possibly the hard they may well have ended this race on the slower tire this gives a nice tire advantage at this phase of the race but catching up we definitely have some potential here for a podium well, they might not make it easy for us as they're going to go side by side here. Are we going to be able to get a move done on the exit like we did before? Yes, we are. Up into fourth position. And how about third? We have two and a half laps left to try to do it. Right up behind. They made a mistake there. It looks like they're on very worn tyres, wherever they are. But here, they're going to go quite wide. And I'm going to be able to nip underneath on the way out. And take the inside on the exit of the tunnel. And move up into a podium paying position. I can already envision the champagne on the podium as we're going to dart off into the distance and say goodbye to our friends there in the background. And this car just came on strong. It, it just kept getting better and better as I really learned how to drive it and get quicker in it. And uh, I was seven seconds away from second place. It wasn't going to be. I wasn't going to be able to reel in that gap. But maybe if I had started it you know, towards the top six, top eight kind of positions I might have been able to do it and let's say if I pulled off a miracle and put qualified on pole would I have been able to keep up with the leader in the Nissan GTR maybe it would have been quite hard but just to even contemplate the possibility of that just shows you that this car is good and in fact the top four well it's me and three Nissan GTRs that kind of just shows you how strong that car is but I really hope you enjoyed this one. That was um, it was quite a fun race in that in that car. A really unexpected gem, I would say. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself an amazing day. Get yourself subscribed if you're new to the channel. And there's a new video on the screen right now. I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.